Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fawcett's Medical and Machine Group. Really, really delighted today to have a really wonderful guest, Dick Brewer, here, who we've been coordinating with now for yeah, well, a couple years or so yeah, about trying to come on and based on a nomination from someone in this group. So thank you, everyone, for nominating folks. I'm also going to share the nomination form again to nominate um, future presenters here in the chat. Um, and then I will try to uh, reach out to them and gently ask them if they'd be interested in joining us. I know that uh, you were double nominated, like several people really, really wanted to hear from you. So mm -hmm. I'm very, very delighted that you're here now. It feels it's good to um, Yeah, yeah, I am super excited for this. Um, and, and, and if you're watching this on YouTube or afterwards, there should be a link to a seminar su summary as well, which contains the slides. But today, I'm really, really delighted to welcome you, uh, Dick Burr. I'm going to share more about your vibe. Yeah? But you will be discussing liquid crystal amplification of molecular motor dynamics to tangible dynamics. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I'll be in the chat monitoring questions, and then we'll pop right in after your presentation. Thanks a lot for joining. Okay. I can start now, right? Yes. Please take yeah. it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, I guess. People come from all over the world, I, uh, I, I assume. Uh, I present this uh, lecture, actually, um, on liquid crystal amplification of molecular dynamics, also on behalf of uh, Dan Sing Liu. Um, many of, of, some of you might know that I'm a retired professor, I'm still active, but uh, nevertheless retired, and Dan Sing is my successor at the uh, Eindhoven University, so I invited here at least to be present at this uh, uh, meeting as, as well. Now I have to go further. Yeah, okay. This is more or less um, uh, the uh, approach that I'm uh, following. So we uh, would like to transfer uh, single molecule, molecular dynamics to tangible effects, effects that you can uh, see or, free or feel or effects that can exert uh, forces uh, uh, on that environment. Uh, and for that, we are using uh, uh, liquid crystals or liquid crystal uh, uh, polars. And uh, the idea is that the um, motor molecules that are added to our systems uh, change the uh, long range molecular order of our uh, liquid crystal, or they are changing the uh, director of the liquid crystal. And as a result, they will amplify the molecular effects to indeed the dimensions that can be seen, felt, or exert forces. It's a little bit shown on these uh, uh, cartoons. You have an, uh, an, um, an, um, a motor molecule embedded in the liquid crystal. You start changing the conformation, for instance. By changing the conformation, you change the order, and then uh, the material might expand in one direction and shrink in the other direction. And by doing this, you can, for instance, create materials, as you can see here on this uh, a uh, little movie, uh, which is uh, as a material capable to lift a, a weight. Before I come to that, before I come to the polymers, I would like to introduce a little bit our uh, early work on um, uh, electrohydrodynamic instabilities, because it is very much uh, related. In this case, um, the molecular motor, it's very different from the motor molecules that most of you uh, uh, are, are uh, uh, considering or working on, but it is just a simple um, um, ionic surfactant, which is added in a very low concentration to our uh, liquid crystal. But when you bring uh, this in an uh, uh, alternating field, and you start, for instance, with a liquid crystal, which is uh, oriented with the long axis of all the molecules, more or less perpendicular to the uh, 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 surface, then you bring uh, the system into an electrohydrodynamic uh, oscillation and um, which changes uh, the system from transparent to uh, highly scattering as can be uh, uh, seen uh, here. And this, for instance, can be used to make an, uh, a little smart uh, uh, window, which can be switched from transparent when the uh, uh, surfactant molecules, the ions are not uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, in, in an electrical field. But as soon as you switch a field on, you see the scattering of these uh, uh, um, materials. Well, now coming a little bit closer to uh, what most people consider as a molecular motor, we have here a spiropiran, and spiropiran uh, can be switched between a non-ionic and an ionic uh, shape. And again, 
we add this molecule in a very low concentration to our uh, liquid crystal, and the liquid crystal then can be switched by light uh, uh, from a uh, um, planar state to the addressed uh, um, uh, um, scattering uh, state uh, due to the um, uh, motion of this mirror cyanide uh, molecule in its uh, electrical field. To the microscope, it typically looks like, uh, like this. And uh, if you look to the sample itself, uh, it, it, if you apply the field, nothing happens. But as soon as you expose it to it, uh, you realize you convert the spiral pyramid in the mirror cyanide uh, shape. Uh, it induces the uh, electrohydrodynamic uh, scattering. And uh, this scattering can also be switched off because this reaction, of course, is uh, reversible if you excite it with uh, uh, green light in this case. And I speed the uh, movie a little bit up. Then uh, you go from the mirror cyanide shape to the spiral shape again. And although you keep the voltage uh, on, the sample becomes uh, uh, transparent uh, uh, again. And um, uh, it should happen any moment in the movie uh, now. Yeah, here it is. And the reason why we do research in our group on this uh, uh, topic is we are studying smart windows. And this is one of the uh, applications that we uh, uh, have in mind that, uh, for instance, you can make a window just by exposing it to uh, blue light. You can create an, an image on it. And later, if you want to get rid of it, you can uh, expose it with uh, green light to make it more uh, transparent again. One step further with this, if you uh, add chirality to this uh, uh, system, and this is work that was done by Yang Yang and Chuck in, in our group, uh, if you add chirality to the system, here again, we have the ionic compound. This can be this uh, uh, surfactant molecule, but it can again be the uh, 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 pyropyran uh, molecule. Then if you start addressing this uh, effect, then you can uh, convert the electrohydrodynamic uh, motions in this very well uh, controlled uh, circular motion around an, uh, a defect uh, structure, as you can see in, uh, here. This is the case where you have only uh, a few dis uh, defects in your uh, uh, sample. But if you bring, um, bring a number of uh, defects together, you can create this uh, uh, very well, <laughs> well, I would say, very beautiful uh, hydrodynamics in your surface uh, as, uh, as, uh, as well. Well, now. I will make the next step to the real molecular motors, uh, showing kind of similar uh, uh, things. And this is what's work, early work that we did together with uh, Ben Friedrichham, well known, I assume, and within the world of molecular motors, where uh, we took an, uh, an, a liquid crystal uh, blend, and to this liquid crystal blend, we added the uh, uh, chiral dopant, uh, the motor molecule of, uh, uh, of Ben. And because of that, the uh, uniaxial uh, alignment of the uh, uh, liquid crystal is converted into this uh, helicoidal uh, uh, alignment with helices with the axis perpendicular oriented to the su uh, substrate. Well, this is the lowest energy state, but if you uh, add some energy to it by a very strong uh, anchoring uh, surface uh, at the glass uh, at the substrate, uh, the glass substrate in this case, then you and you control the um, the, the ratio between the thickness of the film and the pitch of this uh, helix, then you can uh, bring this, uh, these helices into a, planar, uh, uh, into a planar orientation. And this planar orientation we call the so-called fingerprint uh, uh, alignment because they uh, um, find their way in, uh, in an uh, organization that looks very much looks like our human uh, uh, fingerprint in this uh, in this uh, in this case, well, the fingerprint uh, alignment, uh, because of the chiral capillarity, uh, forms uh, deformed uh, surfaces, as is shown uh, here. And first of all, we have the uh, Marangoni effect, the effect that uh, the, or the molecules, the chiral molecules, have a lower surface tension in the perpendicular orientation than in the planar uh, orientation, makes that you have some material flow to the uh, locations where you have perpendicular uh, orientation, that is also shown uh, here, which then builds out a little bit in comparison to the, the areas where you have your planar orientation. But of course, we still have now the motor molecule of Ben uh, in, this, uh, in the system. And as soon as we start to expose this with uh, light, 
the molecules tends to go from one enantiomeric form into the other uh, enantiomeric forms, and that makes that the uh, um, pitch of the uh, helices starts to uh, uh, the helices starts to unwind. The pitch that, uh, becomes uh, larger, and because of that, uh, the uh, fingerprint texture starts to rotate over the surface, and when you uh, add an, uh, a little fiber element into uh, to that, it tends to rotate with the uh, uh, fingerprints uh, as uh, as well. Well, of course, this is a nice uh, example of uh, amplification of an uh, effect of the presence of a little, um, uh, motor molecule to something which is uh, larger and tangible. But of course, in practice, it's still uh, uh, of limited use because you just are dealing with a uh, liquid uh, film which cannot be uh, uh, touched uh, without having your fingers becoming uh, wet. And for that reason, we uh, convert this approach to our uh, liquid crystal polymer networks. Liquid crystal polymer networks are based on liquid crystal molecules, just comparable to the molecules that, for instance, are present in your uh, uh, computer uh, screen. But in this case, we have modified the uh, molecules with uh, polymerizable end groups, in this case, to, uh, to end groups. Molecules can be aligned uh, uh, in the liquid uh, state, just as is done in your uh, television uh, uh, screen by surfaces or by electrical fields. And in the uh, aligned state, by a short uh, uh, UV exposure, you have um, um, the presence of a very small amount of a photo initiator that, uh, that initiates the polymerization reactions of the accurate groups. And you end up with a densely cross-linked uh, network with um, kept its order of the initial liquid crystalline state, but of course it is now converted from liquid into a uh, plastic uh, uh, film. Well, because we are dealing with uh, uh, liquid crystals, in this case we can play with uh, the orientation. We can play with the phases, you can have pneumatic phases, more or less uh, as seen here. You can have the layered phases like schmectic uh, phases, or you can have even columnar uh, phases. Can also bring twist in the uh, liquid crystals, for instance, by uh, 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 playing with the, uh, uh, the, the, the the surfaces that the molecules are in contact uh, with, or you can bring uh, splayed uh, 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 orientation with it. But what is important for this presentation here that we also can add uh, chirality to this uh, uh, molecules. In this case, we have uh, chiral uh, two examples of chiral liquid crystals with the chiral. Uh, uh, centers uh, here or uh, here, and because of that, indeed, we create the. Uh, uh, let me see what I do. Then the we create the uh, uh, chiral helix uh, 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 again. Yeah. Well, one step back to the um, uh, uniaxial uh, system. We we'll come back to the uh, helix uh, some later. If you look to an, uh, to the uh, uh, order of a liquid uh, crystal, you can actually. Uh, decrease the uh, order, for instance, by uh, uh, by heating the uh, the sample. You go from highly ordered state to a less ordered state, and what you will find, uh, because you uh, of this uh, reduction of order, is that you will have expansion perpendicular to the molecular orientation and contraction parallel to the orientation, and that can, for instance, be seen in the thermal expansion coefficients as a function of uh, temperature in the direction perpendicular. This negative thermal expansion and positive thermal expansion into account. If you make a film which has a uh, uh, planar orientation at one side and a perpendicular orientation at the other side, he calls this a splayed orientation. And you can see it that basically, if you take the film, you break it, and you look at the scanning electron microscope to the cross section, you see more or less a resemblance of the molecular orientation. Then you will dealing at the top with this negative thermal expansion. At the bottom, with this very positive thermal expansion, of course. And if you start heating the film, you have made your first uh, uh, actuated in this uh, in this case. Well, this is temperature, but it can also be um, uh, done by um, uh, by temper uh, by light or by electrical field, or you can even absorb uh, other materials into the system to uh, create similar uh, uh, effects. Now going back to the uh, chiral uh, 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 materials uh, again, then you see actually similar uh, uh, effects. You make a film 
met die uh, uh, chirality uh, such that the uh, helices of the molecules are perpendicular to the, uh, uh, to the substrate. And if you then measure the thermal expansion coefficient, it is uh, about uh, zero uh, in the plane of the film because the two polar orientation directions are just balancing, uh, canceling each other out. And you have a very high thermal expansion in the C direction along the helix uh, 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 axis. So if you now make a uh, composition where uh, uh, we have present at least the chiral component, which is responsible for the helices, and we have the uh, uh, now an azobenzene which responds to uh, light. The azobenzene converts from this uh, trans state to the cis state, and by doing this, it uh, affects the order of the neighboring molecules. So we are reducing the total uh, orientation over the uh, in the uh, in the in the liquid crystal uh, film that you have made uh, here. So now, if you are exposing this with uh, light, then what you might expect is that due to the reduction in order at the exposed area, you will have an increase in uh, in volume. The system expands, and you will form a uh, small uh, protrusion in this case. The protrusion can be actually as high as 10% of the uh, uh, film thickness, which means that uh, if you have a 10 micrometer thick film, you create uh, uh, topographies, which are in the order of one uh, micrometer, as can be seen uh, here. And it is reversible. If you switch off the light, the system goes back to the trans state uh, uh, again, and the um, protrusions uh, uh, disappear uh, uh, again. This all on a time scale of several uh, uh, seconds. Well, the mechanism behind this is that the disorder creates volume uh, uh, and expansion. That means that the density uh, is reduced, in this case, from 1.2 to 1.1, and more or less corresponding to the 10% in expansion uh, here. And that we could easily demonstrate by emerging the, uh, the films into a salt water uh, solution. Uh, the salt water has a density uh, just a little bit higher than the uh, lower than the density of the polymer, and then as soon as you expose it with uh, 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 light, the film starts to uh, float. We also have, and then if you switch off the light, it starts sinking to the bottom again. We also have a reference uh, here. In this case, we added a compound. We exchanged the azobenzene compound by another compound, um, uh, which has the same uh, absorbance as the. Uh, Asia benzene, uh, and what you see is basically that the sample uh, remains on the bottom. So a uh, simple uh, warming, uh, warming up of the sample because of light is not uh, the mechanism here uh, that's responsible for the density uh, uh, decrease. Another effect that takes place at the same time is so-called uh, photo uh, uh, softening. Uh, in this case, then, uh, because of the presence of the Asia benzene, the system undergoes a transition from glassy-like to more rubbery-like, and that basically enables the deformation of the surface. It is hardly to imagine, and if you have a glassy surface, that you will get these uh, high surface uh, uh, protrusions um, uh, being formed. So this uh, photo softening effect really supports the deformation at the uh, at the surface as uh, as well. Well, what was now? Uh, the uh, characteristics for this, um, uh, this, this, this measurement was that we are using UV light originating from a mercury lamp. And a mercury lamp means that you have multiple uh, wavelengths, the mercury lines of your lamp uh, system. And uh, in the next experiment where we were doing, basically uh, uh, trying to do the same bit, um, uh, with the use of LEDs, where we have only a single wavelength, we found that the deformation was far uh, less in this case. So if we only expose with an LED lamp in this case, we have deformations in the order of 2% uh, 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 of the uh, fertile thickness. So rather than uh, having a one micrometer, we have only uh, a few uh, hundred uh, nanometers uh, effects. And what appeared to be very important is that uh, if you, as soon as you add a uh, second wavelength, the wavelength that is basically responsible for the reverse reaction of the uh, cis to the trans state, that we could boost the uh, surface deformation uh, to much higher uh, 
failures. So the mechanism that we basically now uh, have in the, uh, uh, in the discussion is that uh, the increasing disorder has originated from the trans to the cis state there's stresses in the coating, and that might explain blending in the freestanding films, as we saw before. And it gives some lateral shear stresses uh, bits also as responsible for this 2% uh, deformation. But as soon as we uh, add um, um, the second wavelength to it, yeah, then we are um, basically um, um, promoting the, also the backwards reaction from the, the cis to the trans in a more dynamic way. So it happens, of course, always in the system that you have trans to cis assistant trans formation is not a static system, but the dynamics of the system is actually uh, improved by adding the second uh, uh, wavelengths. And that uh, uh, oscillatory dynamics in the azobenzene basically creates the um, uh, increase in, uh, in volume. And that's demonstrated here once again. So this is basically in, in thickness measurement of a film in the dark here yeah, in this line. If you expose it to two free light, you will have some increase in the thickness, but as soon as you add a little bit of blue light to the system, the thickness of the film increases uh, 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 enormously. And as soon as you switch off the light, within seconds, basically, it goes back to more or less the initial state. But you should remember that in this state, we still have a lot of uh, uh, cis, uh, Molecules in this in the system had the half life of the azobenzene, the azobenzene that we are using in the order of five hours. While this um, transition to uh, from uh, elevated to flat is uh, occurring in a few uh, in a few seconds, uh, just because the free volume is uh, energetically highly unfavorable, and as soon as we are not actuating this anymore in this uh, uh, double wavelength exposure, uh, basically the actuation of the volume. Uh, formation is also uh, uh, lost. Well, you might say, well, yeah, uh, if you add some blue lights, you simply also are adding uh, energy to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the system. And in order to uh, demonstrate that it's not the added energy which is responsible for that, we did the following uh, experiment. Instead of had, uh, using a second uh, LED lamp, uh, we uh, added to the uh, film. Uh, fluorescent uh, uh, um, um, molecule. The fluorescent molecule absorbs the 365 nanometer LED uh, uh, lamp and converts it into uh, uh, blue lamps by fluorescent uh, uh, emission. So we are basically sacrificing part of our initial LED lamp uh, light, light to create some uh, blue light. And as you can see here, also by just adding this dye, you add uh, you increase the uh, uh, deformation in this uh, uh, system, and you get also a decrease of the density, which is optimized and a small uh, concentration of this fluorescent uh, dye. And not only the deformation is uh, enhanced, also the photo softening effect is uh, enhanced by just adding a little bit of this uh, fluorescent uh, dye. So in this case, just by exposing uh, the, the with UV light in the presence of the dye, you see that the modulus decreases from, in this case, uh, around 1.5 uh, megapascal to a few hundreds of uh, uh, megapascal, which is shown here, and basically also shown here. In this case, we compare it again with a um, um, material which is absorbing at the same wavelength as azobenzene, only seeing small effects. And in the case of our actuating system, you see the large uh, reduction in, uh, uh, in the modulus. Now I would like to go back to the uh, initial system that uh, we studied also with, uh, with Ben, with Ben Feriga, where we had the fingerprint uh, texture. So here we then, again, by controlling the thickness of the film and the uh, uh, interfacial uh, phenomena uh, at the glass uh, surface by um, applying a uh, very strong homeotropic anchoring uh, material, we create these fingerprint uh, textures uh, again. And in the fingerprint textures, uh, um, because of the presence of the azo uh, uh, benzene uh, again, upon actuation, you might expect when the order parameter is decreasing, we will have expansion in the planar area of this uh, film, and we will have 
protraction in the uh, perpendicular uh, uh, area. At the same time, also exerting stress forces to the uh, uh, to the planar area uh, again. So if you make a film like this, and in the polarizing microscope, it looks like uh, this, where you have the black areas. It's the area where the molecules are perpendicular to the surface, and the bright areas is where the uh, molecules are planar to the surface. So now we are going to excite this with uh, uh, UV light again, and what you will see is that it goes from a closer flat state, a little bit the Marangoni effect, uh, what you see in this case, it goes to a uh, highly corrugated uh, uh, state. And now, because of this global action, we basically get an expansion, which is about 20% of the uh, initial uh, uh, film thickness. So in the, in the case of a five micrometer uh, thick film, uh, you can easily reach uh, 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 topographies which are in the order of uh, uh, one micro uh, uh, meter. And an early uh, application might be uh, if you use this system as an, uh, uh, a gripper. So here we have an, uh, an object which is embedded in between the two um, 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 uh, plates with the uh, fingerprint forming surfaces. In the flat state, you'll have a high friction coefficient but because of the regularity of the system, the contact area with the uh, contacting surface is reduced, and you are also reducing the friction coefficient to a much lower value. And by doing this, uh, the two plates um, which are holding this object uh, are releasing the object that you expose them with uh, UV uh, light. So the first application could be friction controlled surfaces or robotic fingers and grippers uh, in, this, uh, in this case. One step further is that we are, can also control the um, served initial surface um, uh, structure. So I already argued at the beginning that the chiral capillarity deforms the fingerprint uh, surfaces and that you have the Marangoni effect more or less in equilibrium with the liquid crystal elasticity in the uh, uh, system that creates the surface uh, uh, roughness in these uh, films. Of course, if you start polymerizing the surface roughness is actually decreasing uh, a little bit because the liquid crystal tends to have polarization shrinkage and the polarization shrinkage is somewhat larger parallel to the molecular uh, orientation than perpendicular to the molecular orientation. So this is reducing this effect, but it can be enhanced again by controlled uh, uh, polarization induced uh, diffusion. And then try to explain this uh, here. So if you have uh, a film and you have locally differences in polymerization rate, then you will have diffusion of your reactive uh, agents to the uh, area where the polymerization rate is the uh, highest, which means if we have here the highest polymerization rate, this will become larger and here it will uh, reduce in, in uh, thickness. Well, having these uh, liquid crystal um, orientations in place, we can control this by diagroic uh, uh, effects. For instance, you can add an azo dye into the system. An azo dye orients with the uh, planar, uh, with the orientation of the liquid crystal. So in the planar state, it will absorb the light, the light that is also needed to initiate the photopolymerization uh, process. So locally, we'll be have a lower polymerization rate uh, where the molecules, the planar, the Azo, uh, the dichroic dye molecules are oriented uh, in a planar uh, way, which means that in the areas where the molecules are perpendicular, the polymerization is rate is higher, and material tends to diffuse to these higher uh, to the, the parallel orientation. On the other hand, you can use a dichroic photo initiator, and a photo initiator which also aligns with the liquid crystal, and now in the, the planar state, it starts absorb uh, more light than in the area where they are perpendicular, so you create more reactive particles, free, uh, um, free radicals in these uh, systems. So now we have a higher polymerization rate in the planar areas in comparison with the perpendicular areas. So diffusion will take place to the planar areas. So that is the game that we are uh, playing uh, uh, here. So here we see an example. This is the example where we are using the diagrammic absorbing uh, die in the, this case. And what you will uh, see is that indeed the perpendicular areas become high and the plane areas become uh, low. 
we could easily demonstrate this by comparing our polarizing optical microscope pictures where we can uh, determine the location of the planar areas and the perpendicular areas with our dynamic holographic uh, microscopy areas where we get an impression of the heights of the uh, uh, of these structures. So this is the case. Uh, now we create a uh, corrugated uh, structure, and this corrugated structure can now actually by again using this uh, uh, actuation by uh, by light, we can invert its uh, liquid. So the higher the perpendicular area now shrinking go down and the planar area goes up. So what is initially high becomes uh, low, and what is initially low becomes uh, high, and this all in an, uh, uh, on a time scale of, um, uh, of seconds uh, in, this, uh, in this case. And this is interesting because you can actually use it for an, uh, uh, a special application uh, 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 for adhesion and release of a gripper uh, in this case. So again, we create our um, system here with the corrugated structure. Again, having uh, the azodon benzene that, is, that we are using for the actuation. And we added also a dichroic dye, which is also an azo uh, for the uh, controlled uh, diffusion processes during the polymerization process. So by doing this, we indeed have the, the perpendicular orientation at the hill and the planar orientation at the uh, bottom. Now we add an, uh, another component, and that is a pressure sensitive adhesive. We are using this uh, protein type of um, molecules, actually inspired by the muscles proteins, what the muscles are using to uh, make them adhere to the rocks in the, in the ocean. Uh, and we took care that this um, protein is at the top just by dipping uh, in, the actuate, in the state where the tops are uh, uh, present in a thin film of this uh, adhesive. And then by um, inverting the, the, the structure, we could uh, bring an, a releasing layer at the other sides. And now we can switch between an adhesive state and a releasing state just by uh, either exposing with your free light or by exposing with uh, blue light. And in this, this case, we can go from a highly adhesive state, as in this case, to a low adhesive state when these areas come up. Or even in water, again, we are using this missile pro type of protein, works also very nice in water, from a highly adhesive state to a low adhesive state. And basically what you can see here is actually the, uh, the dynamics of our surface uh, uh, inversion. Uh, uh, so now, uh, the, let me see, let me start again. So now uh, the, the adhesive state is in the top, and as soon as we expose the UV light, uh, it is inverted, and now the uh, non-adhesive parts are uh, at the top. Yeah, and again, uh, this is playback with, it, uh, with three times the speed, um, but it is still within a reasonable uh, time frame. And uh, if you want to look for an application, then you can uh, use it, for instance, as a pick and place uh, uh, machine. So here we have a copper uh, block. Here we have. Uh, um, the, the sample, and here we have the fingers from Wei Feng uh, uh, here, and Wei Feng is now um, pressing the coating with adhesive part to the copper block, then brings it to another place, exposes it with blue light, and then it is um, uh, uh, with UV light, and then it is uh, released uh, uh, again. So another application that we could bring in place. Just to show once again, because I like the movie so much, released by UV light. Now, this was by uh, light. We can also do similar tricks with uh, electrical fields. Of course, then we need to add um, not the UV absorbing molecules, but we add molecules that respond strongly to the, uh, uh, to the electrical field. Also, in that case, we play, play with the uh, other parameter in the system, and we can convert the um, 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 the, the, the fingerprints, uh, the locations which are high initially become slow, and, and the locations which are low become uh, high again. So again, we can convert uh, the system uh, in the similar way as we saw, uh, as we do it with light, as also shown in this uh, in this movie. And this is actually what we uh, like to use to uh, make a self-cleaning uh, uh, surface, for instance, 
uh, potentially to be used with uh, uh, for solar uh, cleaning of solar cells. So it's uh, well, they become um, converters that um, uh, when they are subjected to a sandstorm, for instance, they are covered and then you have to clean them again. But if you have our uh, system, potentially, we have not done it in this large scale yet. If you, um, you have sand on the surface and we use this model sand and we apply the electric field uh, in the system uh, here, then you will see that you directly can remove the uh, sand from the surface just because of the dynamics in the surface uh, area. I'm now close to the uh, end of my presentation. I would just like to see a few examples of other mo motor molecules. Uh, then we go from uh, surfaces to uh, more freestanding uh, uh, topics. This is work that we did together with um, um, the group in uh, of, uh, at Kent State University with the Salinger group and also with uh, 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 the group of uh, uh, Beth Meyer at the time. In this case, we take a banded uh, uh, film of our material where the film has a uh, uh, splayed structure and we expose it with uh, an uh, LED uh, lamp. At the position where we hit the, the film, it wants to bend away uh, uh, from the light, but because we fix it at both ends, it tends to bend up at another position, which then will be uh, uh, hit by this uh, LEDs. So what you basically uh, then in that case can create a wave in this uh, structure. But in order to get this wave functioning, your um, motor molecules in this case, azo molecules must relax fast enough from the uh, trans state back to the uh, initials, uh, uh, um, from the cis state back to the trans uh, uh, state. And for that, we had to do some uh, uh, synthesis of the materials to create uh, uh, molecules mainly using, by, for instance, using push-pull mechanisms in the system to uh, uh, get them convert, being converted from this uh, um, cis to the trans state. And I have some examples uh, here. Here you can see that uh, the the slow uh, working, uh, slower working samples uh, uh, hardly show any uh, uh, wave formation, whereas the highest uh, uh, relaxing uh, materials shows the first uh, 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 deformation. And now we can start playing with these type of structures. So this is on the land, that is most of the experiments. So we see basically uh, made a frame with this material in it. And then if you start exposing it with light, you can see that you can make a walking uh, uh, element. Of course, it's only for fun and uh, we don't have so many applications for it, but it gives a nice demonstration. Another example is shown here, I will just go away. In this case, we can basically store some energy in the system and uh, we have the same type of deformation, which is also capable to remove some of the scent that we added uh, on the surface, throw it uh, more or less uh, away. The moment of supreme is happening in a second and then it goes here. And here I would like to end uh, with together uh, uh, an example that I did in collaboration with the Beth Meyer uh, group in our uh, uh, lab, where we uh, create basically an, um, an hydro the hydro zone uh, uh, um, responsive uh, uh, material added to our liquid crystal systems. If we expose it with uh, lead, then the, also the uh, hydro zone will convert from the uh, allocated state to the banded uh, uh, state. And then if you would, uh, and then the deformation takes place, and then if you would bring it in time to mill system, then you could uh, hope that the mill really starts to rotate if you expose your uh, uh, polymer films at a single uh, uh, place. And that is also what actually uh, taking, uh, staking uh, place. And I have shown, I hope that I've shown now also the dynamics in our systems by this uh, uh, experiment. So this brings me to the conclusion and outlook. Uh, um, a large part of my life, I worked on liquid crystals uh, meant to be used in uh, in uh, flat panel uh, displays and television uh, displays, both the liquid crystals itself and the liquid crystal uh, polymer networks that I have uh, discussed. But I hope that I have shown here that the liquid crystals in combination with molecular motors 
uh, make a really perfect uh, match, and they are now finding their way to sensors and haptics, social robotics, and communicating uh, uh, services. I would like to thank uh, the uh, industries and the uh, uh, governmental uh, institutes that gave us the uh, budget for this uh, system, the ERC grant, Philips Valuables. I'm working for Philips a long time of my uh, career, at Dutch Polymer Institute and the Dutch National Science uh, Foundation. But uh, and mostly I would like to uh, thank uh, the collaborators, Dan Jing Lu, who is sitting next to me, Albert Schilling and Beth Meyer, and also the students who have worked on this topic, uh, Anne Yelan, Yelan, Wei Feng, uh, Nicolas Tichu, Matthew, and uh, uh, another Matthew. Thank you very much for your attention. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Uh, it was really, really nice. Um, really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching us through it. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions, comments from the audience? Hello. Um, yeah, it's Chris Schackmeister here. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the You have, um, in these liquid crystals, there are a lot of benzyl phenyl esters, and those are rod-like in these systems, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so what what if you could put? I, I asked you to speculate. What if you could put like actual rods, like steroid shaped fused ring systems, in their place? Yeah, all these systems. Um, if the um, uh, aspect ratio is uh, right, you can form uh, uh, liquid crystal phases, uh, of uh, of course. But the question here is, if you want to actuate them, I'm not sure whether the uh, the influence of the, the, the molecular motors, which then have a much smaller scale and have the same efficiency. But you're right, you can just uh, use many different molecular structures. You can even go to uh, 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 fiber, fiber structures, metal fibers, uh, to make a uh, liquid crystalline uh, uh, phase, so to say. Yeah. Do you have co solvents in with these liquid crystals? I've, I've missed the first couple of minutes. <laughs> In the presentation that I've given now, uh, I didn't. Uh, we don't have them. Uh, in other systems, we sometimes do, but the co-solvents are normally also a liquid crystal by themselves, so they are just uh, acting as a uh, uh, plasticizer, for instance. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Anyone else? Okay. Well, otherwise, uh, I'll do my usual spiel and ask a few of our more long-term directed questions. And I know that Chris already tried to get you to speculate here uh, and <laughs> I'll do the same. Uh, so, you know, bear, uh, bear, bear with us here, but like, if you could imagine, you know, like if everything goes well, where could this type of, these types of, yeah, like really, and at this point, like rather scientific breakthroughs could, could, could bring us in the next, you know, five to 10 years, where do you well, think this? This can be going this field if, if people want to get excited about it. Potentially joining this year. I have my, my my highest expectation actually, and that's also why I invited uh, my colleague Dan Ching uh, here because he is continuous. He is really focusing on this. Is the the, uh, the application within haptics uh, surfaces that are responsive that you can feel uh, changing their uh, uh, structure that can communicate uh, with you or can communicate. Uh, uh, we can even make services of uh, to machines that kind of communicating with each other. Things like like that, the atmosphere information from one surface to another uh, 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 surface, either by force and detection. So uh, uh, sensing is then also an important part of that, uh, uh, of course. But also by transferring uh, uh, chemical materials from one surface to another surface, and that is also a topic I didn't have the time to. Uh, uh, to discuss uh, 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 here, but we can also make, for instance, light responsive sponges so that you can eject liquids from the surface. You can have another liquid and surface that is able to uh, to absorb it, and then you can uh, transfer uh, 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 almost in a humor-like way uh, 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 species from one place to another. Yeah. yeah. Wow, fantastic. Uh, could you give like a few direct areas where you think that could have the biggest impact, like in terms of human lives, like which, which areas do you think maybe will be most impacted by this? Well, people are now uh, talking so much about uh, virtual reality and uh, augmented uh, reality. That is the area where we are now in with our uh, materials. So you can really 
field effects rather than only seeing uh, uh, effects. Uh, but we are also working together with the medical fields. So, um, for instance, by developing materials um, which are releasing at the right moment the right uh, species, or just change the uh, the, um, the adhesive action. Right? For instance, if you have an, a plaster and bandage on your on, on your arm, and your arm is very sensitive, people are um, uh, uh, have been burned, for instance. Yeah, they would like to have this plaster removed without any force. But also, you would like to have this plaster firmly attached as long as it is needed. So, by actuating it at the right moment, you uh, change the uh, uh, adhesive properties, and uh, you can remove it without uh, any pain. But this is just an example. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to read out a question from the chat, and then I'll go with Steve and Chris again. Um, so, Stefan Bosley is on a train, so you can't unmute, but he's asking, you have azobenzins and all these liquid crystals, what if you replace them with a directional motor, like Feringa's motor, would you see anything unique as a result or would I still just switch between the photostationary states? Yeah, we didn't, uh, together with Ben, we, we, we worked out many other examples of his motor system as well. Uh, but in essence, uh, so far the effects are kind of uh, uh, similar, so I, Left this basically to Ben to uh, to report on uh, on that. Uh, of course, we are co-authors of his papers, but the effects are not so much different apart from the fact that you have now a chiral molecule and a motor molecule in one. So that uh, an azobenzene is non-chiral. Well, you can make a chiral azobenzene, but the ones that I've shown are non-chiral. So if you want to add chirality, we have to add an, another component. Benz motor molecules are chiral, so they, in that sense, uh, you get, uh, well, two for the price of one, so to say, right? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. I'll nod along yeah, on Steve's behalf. He says, thank you in the chat. Wonderful. <laughs> so right. Okay, cool. Next one up, we have Steve Edder. Hi, Dirk. I want to um, thank you for the presentation and more importantly for driving so much valuable work over the years. Um, I had a question, which was, what kind of forces do you see? How much how much force can be produced with these uh, various methods? Yeah, it depends on how you are using it. I mean, uh, many people in literature are now um, using the bending mode of actuators, and then the forces are relatively uh, 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 limited, uh, so to say. But um, um, depending on the stiffness of your uh, actuated, uh, yeah. But you have seen what we could do with the um, uh, grabbing system. When I started the presentation, we had this uh, element, this film that pick up this weight, and uh, and then um, that the forces are really um, in the order of um, um, uh, of, of, of megapascals, uh, 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 so to say. And if you go to the surface deformation, then the forces are in of the order of the. Uh, modulus of the materials, so that you come to uh, 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 forces of uh, hundreds uh, of maybe, yeah, hundreds of megapascals. Always have to divide by two if they, because the surface is only divided, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 um, deforming 50% uh, of the area, so to say, but uh, yeah. So the, the surface forces of the deforming surface, these are the, giving you the highest forces, forces uh, so to say. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Wonderful, and we have Chris again. Um, thank you. Um, in, in that example where you had it picking up that little puck and then you shone a light on it and it released it. Yep. Um, my understanding is it picks it up uh, could could you describe that a little bit more? You've got these ridges uh, yes. on on there, and then it picks it up, and then you hit it with light, and the ridges and the valleys invert, and it lets it go. Is that correct? That's, ex that's exactly how it happens. Yeah. So you have the the, the little ridges. The the tops are covered with this protein, this uh, uh, pressure sensitive adhesive, you may call it, right? And as long as they are at the top, you can adhere something to it. But as soon as you are bending them away from the surface, uh, the, the object is then confronted with the uh, uh, releasing uh, uh, part of the sample, and that's 
uh, rejecting it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, how robust are those polymer surfaces? Uh, that oh, very robust. Very robust. It is well. Basically, it is a glass plate in that case, where you have only a ten micrometer of a, an, a, of a film on top of it. Right. The film is initially in this uh, high modulus uh, uh, state, so that can be in the border of one gigapascal, for instance. Uh, during actuation, you might reduce the modulus a little bit to few hundreds of uh, megapascal, but you really can touch them, and there's no no no, no problem there. So the liquid crystal doesn't slough off, or no, no, it's really a, a, it's really a plastic film which is adhering very firmly to the glass plate. Okay, yeah. and how susceptible is that to fouling? How susceptible for fouling? Yeah, uh, I think that the adhesive might be fouled if you put it in the sand. Then the, all the the sand is on the uh, all the adhesive, right? I mean, it is susceptible for fouling. I, I assume. Yeah, but I also assume you can wash it out. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It was really, really nice talk. Agree. Okay, in the last few minutes, maybe uh, one other thing that we usually like to ask is if you could point people that are maybe now entering your field to like a new undersolved challenge. Like if there's a bottleneck that you really prefer to speed up work in your area, what would that be? What would you draw other folks' attention to to work on? next in this field? Uh, if I understand your question right, um, what could speed up the development here? Is that correct what you are saying? Well, yeah. I would say, um, um, especially if, uh, people in the in applica application areas, as I already said to you, uh, maybe, I mean, we have functions in our materials and maybe there are many more applications for it, which we simply don't see here, right? And that's why I'm also happy, actually, with presentations as this, uh, because you hope to, to reach a, a community which is uh, 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 at least not so often reached by uh, by me or by Dan Ching uh, uh, here. So um, I believe that there, are, there must be many more applications uh, here uh, uh, to be worked out. But there is also limitations. I mean, one of the limitations, I mean, we are working with... Uh, we are promoting applications in, um, in, uh, in, in, for instance, solar cells, but therefore you need to have new materials basically because our materials are not uh, photostable enough to, uh, uh, well, to have a lifetime left, let's say uh, 10 years. So you need to improve on that uh, part, which can be done, but it should be done uh, first. Uh, we were also approached by NASA because they were interested in our uh, self-cleaning surfaces for their Mars rovers uh, type of uh, uh, application. So we had these discussions with them. But of course, then the requirements that they are asking, yeah, we cannot meet at this moment that uh, uh, we really should work on, on uh, systems that are more highly temperature, temperature stable, uh, uh, for instance, can withstand different temperatures than we are doing than we are having in our lab environment. So this is an area where uh, if you really want to widen up your application field, stability is uh, either temperature or uh, light stability. That should be uh, uh, important issues to, uh, uh, to, 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 to work on. Yeah. Thanks for being so tangible and uh, practical with this. Uh, final question. I know that we're at time now, but um, I wouldn't want to let you go before asking. If people get very excited now about your work in particular and the work of your collaborators, what could they do to support your work? This is like a moment where you can give a shameless plug for <laughs> if you have lab students that, uh, that, that you're trying to hire. Anything just, to just contact us and um, uh, we are always open for collaborations. We like to uh, uh, enter new fields. Uh, and as I said, I'm retired, but I have a very uh, a skillful uh, successor uh, here sitting next to me. So uh, she definitely can be, will pick up then the, uh, the new challenges, really. Come to our well, university. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that we have you and your skillful uh, successor perhaps on next time as well. And maybe we even welcome you at an in-person uh, one of our foresight workshops. Thank you so, so much for joining. Thank you for joining on the Sunday. Thank you everyone for joining on the Sunday. We're uh, experimenting with a few new formats. Some people prefer weekends, some people prefer weekdays. 
And so let me know how you think it went. Uh, thanks so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the work you do. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's always inspiring to see, I think, how much progress people are making. And very, very excited to see um, what's coming on. I enjoyed the discussion. Yeah.